Yo, what's up? My name is Petrowski, and welcome back to episode 9. That's crazy that we're already at episode 9 of Road to 1 Million Pokien from Scratch on Pokemon Mo on a fresh account. We're currently sitting around around 53k. We got our fourth gym badges. Uh, I believe we do actually have a Pokemon, yeah, a couple Pokemon that have sold in the GTL, so I can go ahead and grab that extra Pokien from them as well. Go ahead and put us at a nice 76k. So now we're finally at a point in the account where we can do a ton of things. We can just farm Pokemon if we want. We can. I can go to a spot. I can set up and just do a lot of farming if I want to. If I want to make some Pokemon. Um, if I want to save up for a really important storyline item. Something like Choice Specs, Choice Scarf, or Choice Band. Those would be super helpful. I can do some flipping on the GTL if I see fit. If I see some like well-priced Pokemon within my obviously very small price range. And I'm like, hey, like I could sell that for a little more. I can go ahead and do that if I would like. There's a ton of things that I can now do on this account uh, with with these, you know, with these gym badges. Uh, the next important thing is going to be unlocking the Safari Zone, and that's what I'll be slowly aiming towards, especially with this video. Getting to Safari Zone is going to be so, so, so huge, uh, and I might just be able to go bite down this trail and make my way there. I'm not quite sure, but unlocking the Safari Zone is going to be so huge and give me a way to kind of farm Pokemon and farm a bunch of one time 31 Pokemon for much cheaper because one Pokeball costs 200 Pokeyen. Entering the Safari Zone only costs 500 Pokeyen and you get 30 Safari Balls which are equivalent to Pokeballs. So you save so much money on Pokeballs alone. I'm actually going to go ahead and try to make my way there right now i know there are gonna be a lot of trainers oh there's actually this storm that's in my path i totally how did i forget about this okay so i guess the thing that i'm gonna have to focus on is getting the the poke flute which i totally forgot how to do so i'll be taking a quick visit to google and i'll see you guys in a sec okay so there's a ton of stuff before i can actually get to fuchsia and get that that beloved safari zone access first things first i'm gonna have to defeat the celadon Team Rocket Center, so I'm gonna gonna go ahead and get started on that. It shouldn't be an issue. It'll just take some time. It'll also earn me some nice Pokemon. So I'm gonna talk to this Team Rocket dude. He's gonna get a little angry at me. I'm gonna beat him up, take his money, and I'll see you guys in a sec after this quick Team Rocket battle. And then I'm gonna start engaging in this kind of like dungeon. It's like it's like it's like there's a lot of dungeons in the Fire Red storyline. A lot of dungeons in Kanto, where it's a lot of like uh, battling through countless trainers and kind of taking over their hideouts or clearing things out. I'm gonna have to do this for. Uh, the Celadon Mart, I'm going to have to do this for the Saffron, I believe, Sylph Facility or whatever. I believe you do that for so I'm going to payday this and then swap out to a strong Pokemon and, and sweep through from there. So, But I will see you guys in a little bit after this battle. Okay, there's that trainer defeated. I can't wait to evolve my War Turtle into Blastoise. That'll be a pretty big deal. Another big thing is I'm going to be learning Shell Smash. Yes, Shell Smash at level 35. That'll be a massive deal. I think I will be learning it. The issue is what I'm what move I'm gonna be putting Shell Smash over, I'm really not sure. I mean it probably just rapid spin. Um it probably just ends up being rapid spin. Who am I who am I kidding me? Uh, it's nice to have rapid spin, it's like clear like stealth rocks or spikes, but I just I don't think there's many, if any, storyline uh gyms or Pokemon that do that, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, I probably am going to go ahead and dodge this person for a split second and go grab this Pokeball, but then head back to them. Escape Rope, that's nice. I, I think you can Escape Rope out of here. Uh, I'll go ahead and... Yeah, I'll leave... Oh, my Meowth has a Great Ball. It must have picked that up. That's hilarious. I actually didn't know that... Oh, they, I think they nerfed Pick Up recently. Okay, so Pick Up now goes there. Okay, so I have to like make sure I remove the item. So I removed... Okay, let me go ahead and battle this person. I'm going to get the Payday off and then swap to a War Turtle. And keep working towards leveling my War Turtle... Getting him to level 35 for the Shell Smash, and then 36 for the eventual Blastoise Evolve. So, I'll see you guys in a little bit. Okay, that's that trainer dealt with. Time to continue delving into this dungeon, quote-unquote. I'm going to go ahead and head over here. Yeah, I should be able to quickly beat... Let me actually lead my party with my War Turtle, because my Meowth got defeated uh, pretty early. That's okay. I may actually like defeat this floor, and then go heal really quickly, and then re-enter the dungeon. That might be the best play. But I'm trying to get as much XP on my Meowth and my War Turtle as possible, especially since War Turtle is so close to level 35. Uh, and I just need my Meowth higher level. I'd really like my Meowth to be higher level for the rest of the, you know, just the rest of the storyline. I shouldn't need a Rain Dance here. Aqua Tail should be fine to just Aqua Tail and see how that goes. Yeah, nice. One shot. Perfect. Okay. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, one quick tidbit of information that's kind of important is that usually I wouldn't evolve... Uh, I don't know if Aquatail or Bite's more damage. Aquatail might be more damage. Er. Yeah, I think Aquatail is actually more damage. Uh, just, yeah, flat out. Because Bite would be 120 doubled, and then Aquatail is 
90 plus what 45 so yeah it's slightly more damage anyways normally you wouldn't uh, evolve your meowth because it has pickup um and persian doesn't have pickup and pickup is an ability that kind of gives you that a little you know some few extra items that extra pokey and that can be super nice sometimes i'm not gonna be able to get through there but basically uh you keep it as a meowth all the way to level 100 for pickup i'm gonna go heal really quickly but i think i'm gonna need the the base stat damage increase from persian throughout my storyline like having that damage increase of the base stats increasing from it being a Persian is going to be really important. I think I basically am trying to value the stats and that damage over the picked up ability and that slightly extra Pokeyan. But I could change my position on that, especially since picked up got nerfed recently uh, in an update. I'm not sure. I'm not sure my position on that yet. I'm not sure if I'm going to uh, keep it a Meowth or not or let it evolve into a Persian. I'm really kind of undecided. I might, I probably, I'm leaning towards Persian right now, but. We'll see how it goes. Anyways, on to the next floor. I'm going to battle this gym duder. Not gym duder, but just trainer really quick, and I'll see you guys after. Okay, there's that trainer easily dealt with. I should have actually thought about this a little more before just going, but I mean, that's fine. It puts me here. So, I don't remember how to do this puzzle at all, but it's time to slowly wake my, wake my, wake, make my way through it. There's a moonstone. That's pretty cool. It's probably untradeable, though, would be my guess. I think most of the items, yeah, most of the items you pick up, or all of the items you pick up nowadays. Hyper Potion's really helpful. That's really nice to go ahead and grab. Most of the p items you pick up nowadays throughout the storyline are untradeable, which is interesting, which I kind of understand. TM Snarl, it's not a big deal. Where do I go from here? I have to think about it a little bit. I want to get. I want to make sure I get all of the items. Let's go ahead and go down here, maybe. If I go here, it leads me here. Let's try this. I haven't done this puzzle in so long, so I'm really just going in blind on this. Um, hmm... I mean, I only can really go here. This is like really the only real path. And then this doesn't take me anywhere, really, except for... Oh, he's here. So that's the way to get out. Okay. Let's go ahead and head this way. I don't need to get out over here. There we go. Okay, that's what I was looking for. Perfect. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. So actually, okay, this is actually much easier than I remember. So I can. I already know the way out, um, I believe, if I can remember correctly, at least. Let's go ahead and do that. I need to find a way over here is the meme so let's go ahead and head yeah this is okay this is actually way easier than i remember i feel like it looks really crazy on the surface level but this puzzle was actually extremely easy let's go ahead and head up here i do remember vaguely what the area looks like that i want to get to let's go ahead and battle these trainers just get my payday off i do vaguely remember what the area looks like uh that i want to kind of get to for the for the pokeball containing the key the key card i believe but yeah i really haven't done this this part of the story in a super long time i'm gonna defeat this trainer and i'll see you guys in a split second okay what an absolutely huge level i wish i would have gotten the ding the recording with the ding with it but i'm gonna be teaching smell sh shell smash smell shash is hilarious shell smash over rapid spin which is gonna be huge and i did realize that i have silk scarf on my war turtle I, for the rapid spin damage increase but i definitely should have it on my meowth because it's going to be using fake out and payday every battle so why would i not want like the multiple damage sources increased on the yeah, normal type attacking bonus plus it gets stab bonus like i don't know what yeah that was just a funny decision for me or maybe i got the i just think i just had the silk scarf maybe before i had the meowth was maybe my thought process but I don't remember super well, but anyways, I want to put a cher cherry berry can go on my, my war turtle. Why not? Anyways, my war turtle now has shell smash, which is a very interesting move. It's a move that is so, so powerful, but also so, so scary kind of. It's, it's a sweeping move and it boosts your, your, the users sharply, which is really important. It sharply raises the attack, special attack and speed stat. So that's going to raise each of those stats by two stages and then decrease the defense and special defense by one stage. But that's insane. Increasing everything like that sharply is just so, so strong. I, I can't even express it. Like, it's basically a nasty plot combined with a sword stance combined with an agility, which is unreal. Yeah, now that I have that move, that's going to help me through kind of difficult situations. I haven't beaten this guy, have I? That'll help me through more specific, more difficult situations throughout the storyline that I can't really deal with. Something like that would have been super helpful for Erica. Quiver Dance would have been also super helpful for, Quiver, for Erica. But it's really, 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 really nice to have these extremely strong... Like, I picked some incredible Pokemon to kind of lead the game with because now I really have some incredibly strong setup Pokemon 
um, to blast through the story with. Like having these are literally just two. I can't. I know. I can't overstate this enough. These are two of the best setup moves in the game. Like payday or not payday. Excuse me. Shell smash plus quiver dance are just two of the best setup moves in the game. So to have both of those on my two strongest Pokemon is going to be an absolute. It's going to be such a powerhouse, such a powerful thing to have. But I'm going to go ahead and finish this battle, and I'll see you guys after. A super nice thing about Shell Smash and Quiver Dance and other setup moves that aren't really talked about is the PP save during storylines. PP can be a really important factor on certain moves or certain Pokemon. So, for example, my War Turtle is a nice crit. My War Turtle only has 10 PP on Aqua Tail, and my Blossom only has 10 PP on Giga Drain, which are... Both, you know, both of those Pokemon's most spammed, most important moves. So to be able to kind of per preserve PP on those things by setting up and doing more damage, it's insane. Like saving one PP per Pokemon per fight. Like imagine if I if I shell smash at the start of that fight, and then I can just one shot everything in that fight with Bite, which I couldn't normally do without shell smash. Uh, it saves you know a ton of PP on Aqua Tail, or maybe I can like one shot everything with. Uh, I could already watch everything with Aqua Tail, so that's a perfect example of like, oh, I could literally just save all of my PP on Aqua Tail and use Bite instead, which has a ton more PP. So it's pretty, it's such an under talked about benefit and factor of setup moves and how important they are through storyline. And I can't recommend to new players enough to try to play for setup moves and get setup moves on your Pokemon during storyline. I know that when I was a kid, I would just get four attacking moves because I thought all those moves were lame. So I'd always just get four attacking moves, like get all the coverage I can, and that's all I would do. I would just attack, 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 and be branded about it. But in Pokemon, you really have to think a lot more. You have to get things like Sleep Powder, things like Quiver Dance, uh, things like Giga Drain to sustain. Uh, it's it's just really important. Things like Shell Smash on your War Turtle, which you would never expect. I, I think it's just it's just really important to consider the differences of the campaigns and play accordingly. Anyway, that's enough ramble and enough. Uh, you know, flushing over Quiver Dance and Shell Smash, but I'm going to keep playing through this dungeon. Okay, so it seems like I have to head back this way, and I assume either go down or upstairs. I forget which way I came from. I think down, so I can head over here. I should be able to get my Blastoise pretty soon, which is also a pretty exciting thing. I'm going to battle this trainer and work towards Blastoise. Blastoise? See you guys in a sec. Okay, that trainer defeated as I head down my path, pick up the slightly hidden Pokeball, get fake tears as a TM, that might be a slightly useful move, but a lot of the TMs I've been encountering are really not that useful. Things like Snarl uh, is not going to be super helpful. I'm going to grab this Pokeball. Many, okay, Rare Candy. Now, that's a helpful one. I try to get as many helpful items as I can. There's nothing up here. I think I should have just double-checked this, but yeah, I'm pretty sure there's nothing there. Let me head back through down here. I guess not this area. There's nothing for me here. Let me head over here. That's where I need to be. Over here, down this path, and I'll see you guys once I finish this puzzle. Okay, I'm actually about to intentionally come down and fight this trainer. Actually, I think I have to. Okay, that's, per that's perfect then. Okay, easy. Fight this trainer really quick, and I'll see you guys in a sec. Okay, this should be the last battle that I need, as long as this Aqua Tail hits. If that last Aqua Tail missed, that would be hilarious, but this should grant me a Blastoise of Evolution, I'm pretty sure. 186. There we go. Okay, so we finally get to evolve our Starter Boy Squirtle into a Blastoise. I'm pretty excited. Okay. Dun dun dun. You know, the typical music, typical stuff. Let's go ahead. Come on, give me the Blastoise. It's gonna be really cool to have Shell Smash Blastoise. I don't know, that's such a huge... I don't know, I'm just excited. It's a very powerful Pokemon. Okay, awesome. That's super sick, super cool. Also having... I'd like to eventually, like, put a special move on this thing and not having both just double physical so I can be able to have that coverage. Uh, I really need to heal my Pokemon if possible somewhat soon. Upgrade's really nice, now I can evolve a Porygon if I get one. Okay. I definitely need to try, and I, th I think there is a person in this place that actually heals your Pokemon. Ether, that's nice, uh, if I remember correctly, but I could also just be wrong. There's a person here. Where do I go from here? So I've got this Pokeball. Oh, this guy, I don't think he gives it. There's someone who gives... Oh, maybe this guy has it. Maybe that's fine. I think he mentioned it. I don't know. I remember there was some person that gives the key. I don't know. I'll battle this guy, and we'll see. How good does my Blastoise look in battle, though? Mm, that sprite and animation, that's awesome. I also was able to shell smash at the start of his battle and then sweep through. He did get poisoned, but it's kind of okay. I mean, I know I dropped the lift key. Yeah, okay, this is this dude who drops the lift key. What a dork. Okay, so I, need, I have the lift key. I also need to get the key card, though. So I can't go anywhere over here. There's Giovanni. Okay, I see him there. So now I need to head back to the elevator. It's pretty easy. Like, it's funny that even if you don't know the way through this, like, Pokemon gyms are so linear. <laughs> Like, I mean, the Pokemon Dungeons, I mean, they're meant to be. That's the whole point. They're very linear, and even if I haven't played this in, like, a super long time, as long as I know, like, vaguely what I need to be doing, 
uh, it's pretty easy to be able to like just blast through the storyline. I think I need to go down actually to get to the. I don't think there's a way to get to the lift over here. Yeah, I think I have to go back down here. As I say that, as I like to say how easy it is in linear to get through this dungeon, I get lost. That's hilarious. I think I have to come over here to be able to get to the key thing. So let's go ahead and try that. And I'll see you guys when I'm at like an elevator. Okay, here we are post that puzzle at a nice elevator. I'm not sure if I want to. I probably want to start leading with my. Blossom. I don't see why not. I still need to level it now too. So floors. I think I just have level floor four to go to, right? I think I've been to all the other floors. Okay, I'm gonna go grab this Pokeball. Not lots of nice Pokeballs to grab. Calcium. A lot of this stuff I'll probably end up selling to shops. Like calcium, I would never use. Okay, so here's is Giovanni just right here? This, this dungeon's so much easier than I remember. That's actually crazy. But that also means there's no heal uh, in this. In this place which i thought there was maybe it's worth to i probably sh maybe should have led with blastoise and get some damage off i don't know if it's worth to have this kind of backup switch okay i'm actually going to quiver dance and set up for this fight a little bit just because i want to be able to preserve as much pp and as much hp as possible so i'm gonna like play these two fights against these grunts a little slow uh but i do have potions so i mean we'll see how it goes Okay, I want to make sure I have minimum 8 Giga Drain PP left for Giovanni. So I'm going to be trying to stay around that or um, around 6. Yeah, 6 to get. I think I might have said 8, but I meant 6. Um, I'm going to be trying to keep minimum 6 Giga Drain for Giovanni. I'm actually going to lead uh, with a different Pokemon this time. I'm probably going to lead with Blastoise and just do as much damage as I can off of him. I don't think Giovanni's going to have a Sandstorm po setting Pokemon or any sort of like weather. Uh, that'd be super unfortunate because I really need... If he does have weather, I really need my Blastoise alive to be able to come in and set up a rain dance. Uh, but we'll see how this goes. I'm just going to try to blast through this. I should be able to bite this. Yeah. I didn't one-shot, actually. That's okay. Oh, my... But he's out of poison. Should, or maybe go to 1 HP? Okay, he dies poison. That's okay. I can go ahead and... I might, I might just bring in Dark Trio. I'm just trying to keep my Blossom, like, healthy. Uh, even though it wouldn't be that big of a deal to bring it in here. I might as well get some, get some free XP as well. Uh, it's nice to get some free XP on these like lower level Pokemon, like my Dugtrio, uh, my Meowth, and my Blastoise kinda, kinda lower level, but at least lower level compared to uh, my Blossom being level 40. Okay, let's go ahead and he's gonna break this guy in, I can go ahead and slash. I'll see you guys after this battle. Okay, this is kind of funny. Uh, my dead trio did die, but I can actually come in and get some quick free XP on my Eevee. So I'm excited to see what you guys want the Eevee to be. Uh, it, it's going to be super behind. Like a lot of episodes are going to come out. Cause it's currently uh, the 7th of October as I record this episode. And I only asked what you guys wanted the Eevee to be, I believe, in the last episode. Maybe this episode. I don't even remember. Um, but it's going to be a while before I evolve it. And you guys will see a lot of episodes of it being an Eevee. Uh, but then one day you'll see it evolve into the correct thing uh, that I asked you guys for. So one day we'll see it. Okay, hopefully I can sweep. I should be able to sweep through this with Quiver Dance Blossom pretty easily. But here's the Giovanni fight. This is going to give me Sylph Scope, I believe, which is going to let me go to Lavender Town and head through the kind of ghastly area, the Lavender Tower, you know, the infamous Lavender Tower, get to the top, uh, defeat Giovanni or defeat someone up there. I think it's Giovanni as well up there. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to Sleep Powder, actually. Well, that misses. That's unfortunate. Uh, but yeah, I should be able to get up there. Shadow Claw should be neutral damage. Oh, that did no damage. Wow, that's perfect. Um, okay, I don't know if I need a Sleep Powder. I probably should just straight up Quiver Dance in front of his face. He's not going to do that much damage to me. Uh, but anyways, that'll help me get through Lavender Tower, and that'll help me get to the top of that, and that'll help me get the Poke Flute, which will help me wake the Snoraxes, which will then help me get Leftovers, which is awesome because Leftovers are an item that are on the item floor, or like the space below where Snorlax used to uh, sleep. I'm going to go ahead and Quiver Dance twice. I don't even know if I need to. One Quiver Dance might be enough to sweep the entirety of Giovanni. Man, everything but Erica throughout this entire storyline has been pretty easy. But Erica was so, so, so difficult. It's kind of insane. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and Giga Drain. And it might be... I don't think it's four times resist. At least two times resist. But, okay, that'll one-shot. Easy peasy. Anyways, I want to get the Poke Flute. Uh, help unlock, relax, help unlock leftovers, and then finally, it'll help me unlock the Safari Zone, which will be one of the most important money makers on this account, and one of the best money makers on this account. For those who don't know, uh, in my personal opinion, catching Magikarp in the Safari Zone is the best low-level, low-requirement money-making method in the game, in my opinion. Um, I think it's really, really, really quite good. You probably make around 70 to like 90k Pokeyen per hour, catching Magikarp and listing them for one time 31 prices, and just, it's it's really nice. It's 
it, it's very very powerful and i think it's under talked about and i have a video uh loot from a thousand magic carp which kind of covers that topic and covers how powerful it is uh but i would also like to make a more succinct guide for the t that for that process and for that type of uh you know money making method i think having a specific guide for it would be super nice right now it's more so just a hey watch me catch a thousand also this is kind of a good money making method here are all the numbers but like I don't know, i'd like to have more of a you know guide based around it being the method as opposed to just like the loot from anyways that's giovanni absolutely stomped quiver dance is very very powerful very good very strong awesome incredible cool to see 2400 pokien easy peasy from big bad giovanni He's going to go ahead and drop the Sylph Stope for me. Perfect. And I think I'm just totally done this dungeon, which is awesome. So I can actually just head up here, go back to the first floor, and then head to the Poke Center, heal. And then I think from there, I guess I'll just head... Oh, I have to battle this dude, I guess. I guess I'll just head directly to uh, Lavender Town from there. I need to make sure if there's anything else I need to do, but I I'll double check. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Okay, back to heading out of the rocket hideout. We left the hideout with 87k Pokien. That's pretty nice. We got some good, you know, Pokien gains from the trainers there. Let me head to the PC, heal up from here, and I think there might be a Pokemon I need to sell in the PC really quick. I actually can check my listings and see if anything sold really quick. There we go. So, okay, 9,500 Pokien plus 7,600. We're, oh, that's incredible. Okay, that's a huge milestone. We reached our first 100 thousand pokien that's crazy dude we're literally at the fourth gym badge and we're already 10 percent done our challenge like i thought i'd be have to like be grinding post game a ton uh to have to like make this one mil pokien but dude i literally might just make it on the way to the elite four at this point that's really really nice really really incredible do i have any more one times i just want to start one that i want to keep I don't, I thought, I must have sold that Pidgeotto. Yeah, I caught that Pidgeotto, but I sold it. Okay, super easy, super peasy. Let's go ahead and head back to Lavender Town, I guess. Incredible. I don't know. I'm, I'm really happy with the progress of the series. I hope you guys are liking it. I've, I've, I don't know. This series has been so refreshing for me. Playing a new account. I love this game, but I've been playing since 2013. Uh, well, this doesn't show it, but I've been playing since 2013. I've been playing this game for a very, very long time, and... I grind a lot, I shiny hunt, I EV train, I level, you know, it's, it's a lot of like grinding and it can be monotonous and it can be, it can get tedious over times and it can become a little unfun, um, but I still really enjoy it most of the time, but this has like given me almost a newfound reappreciation for that kind of grinding where it's like really become really funny. I know there's a, a renamer, yeah, I don't care about that, but it's nice to know he's there, um, but yeah, it's, I don't know, it's really nice to like have that appreciation kind of regained uh for this game and for like playing a fresh account it's just been so beautiful and so nice and so refreshing i keep saying it but it's this account has been incredible for my experience in the game and incredible for my enjoyment of the game and i just hope that you guys have enjoyed it as much as i have now to conquer lavender tower i'm not going to be able to use or lead with my meowth at all kind of obviously because it's not going to be able to hit ghost types with normal type moves so that will not be leading my party at all i will either be leading with my blossom or my blastoise i'm not sure which i probably am actually gonna go blossom just because i want this thing to be able to excuse me hello thank you i want this thing to be able to uh be my high highest level pokemon and get to level like what is it 47 46 my level cap so i'm gonna go ahead and i guess it's time to start battle tower maybe um first things first I think it's time to end this episode, unfortunately. Uh, it's been an incredible day of recording. Uh, the two episodes that I did record today are going to be a little shorter than normal. Let me know if you guys prefer this format. Let me know what kind of length. I really need feedback on this, and I really appreciate feedback on this. I want to know what length of videos you guys prefer. Do you prefer around a 20-minute range, 30-minute uh, range, 40-minute range? Like what? I, I like them to be kind of like episodes, kind of like a television show or an anime or whatever you know what you watch. Uh, I like that kind of format but let me know how long is too long and like what kind of format you guys most prefer i think i've heard, I've heard a lot of uh wants for longer formats from viewers but i know that there's got to be people who don't have as much time and want the shorter format so whatever your opinion is don't be scared to share it i truly want you know your genuine feedback uh if you want the like, two minute videos only tell me and like i understand you know I'll, i want to take that into account at the very least you know but anyways 
Thank you guys so much for watching. Like this video if you liked it. Dislike it if you didn't. Leave all that feedback in the comments below. Subscribe. Please subscribe for more Pokemon content. It really helps me out and it shows support. And I like talking to you guys and meeting you guys. I really appreciate it. Join the Discord below to talk and meet me. Hang out with me. Ask questions. I answer. I'm pretty much talking. I'm either answering questions on Reddit, YouTube, Discord, in game. I'm like constantly talking to people and constantly answering questions. Basically 24-7. Even when I'm not at my PC, I'm on my phone talking to people and answering questions. So, And I really like it. It keeps me busy, uh, and it's, it's a fulfilling life. So I hope you guys are having a great day, and I'll see you next time on the Road to 1 Million Pokemon series. Peace and love from Petrowski.